in view of uh, the political constraints uh, in, the re in Asia, but also in the rest of the world, uh, governments are short-lived or governments have short vision, the immediacy of uh, elections. Uh, no one does really think about to 30 years ahead what the country Asia should look like. Uh, but then uh, I would say that there is, in this 21st century, policy making and diplomacy are no longer prerogatives of uh, elected or unelected uh, politicians. Civil society, individuals, uh, intellectual thinkers have a greater say influence today in shaping national policies and uh, foreign policies. So I believe that uh, Asian people, civil society, could uh, force the hand of the governments to uh, adopt a common strategy. Because I believe such a common strategy that deals with uh, elimination of extreme poverty, of uh, elimination of illiteracy, increasing expenditure on um, education, from childhood to university level, scientific, vocational uh, level. A roadmap on environmental uh, issues, to clean up our rivers, to clean up the lakes, to plant trees, uh, to uh, clean up our seas, restock uh, marine life, uh, corals, all of that, you don't have to have it. Uh, agreement on other issues before we do it. We still can have unresolved border uh, disputes, maritime border disputes, we can have all of that, uh, but we go for what everybody agrees. We set up a uh, fund, an Asian fund on environment sustainable development, uh, led by countries with more money, China, Japan, Korea, India, etc. Uh, there is know-how, so let's work together. And such an exercise could create such a good atmosphere that will make resolution of border disputes easier. So uh, that's how I see it. But I know also that when you're dealing with governments, politicians, it's extremely difficult to uh, provoke new thinking and new policies, unless they are forced to. They can be forced to by the power of public opinion, by civil society, when civil society is organized and put pressure and put forward the ideas.